Here's a lesson that hopefully in the future you will be able to recall, recognize, and possibly not have to relearn too much. I mentioned in a previous lesson that your brain is like a filing system, and that long-term memory has no known limit. Theoretically, anything can be retrieved or remembered, but that's only if you're able to find it. In this lesson, we're going to look at three methods of memory retrieval, recall, recognition, and relearning. Let's start with recall. Our definition for this is the retrieval of information using minimal cues. So here's an example. You're on your way home after school, you with your cute little bag and pigtails, and you get asked, hey, how was school today? Well, there are so many ways you can answer that. You could think and go, um, oh yeah, uh, I played handball at lunch. Uh, teacher caught my friend sleeping in class. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, or you could go sequentially and be like, oh, well, first we had maths and then PE. And then the best subject, of course, science. Uh, or uh, you, you might maybe catch sight of that newly forming scab on your hand and be like, oh, that's right. I stacked it in PE when they asked us to warm up. Yep, got a nice little bruise because I'm super athletic. And I just showed you three forms of recall right there, starting with free recall. So that's just remembering as much information as possible in any order without cues. So they go randomly thinking, oh yeah, I played handball at lunch. Uh, the serial recall, so that's recalling information in an order, order in which it was um, presented or in which it was experienced. So it's like, oh yeah, period one was this, period two was this. And then there's cued recall, and that's recalling assisted with uh, cues. Uh, cues that don't actually involve the original item, so it's like a, a hint or you know something. For example, being given uh, initials to help you uh, recall a name. The second type of memory retrieval is seen in this example here. So we've got a witness who's been asked to look at a row of suspects and identify which one they think is the perpetrator. Is this a form of recall? Well, you think so using the English word, but she's not actually retrieving information using minimal cues. Because, I mean, the correct answer is right there assuming that one of these guys actually did it. She just needs to identify which one. So according to our definition, this is no longer a recall, it's recognition. So recognition is a process of retrieval that requires identification of a correct response from a set of responses from, from a set of, of alternatives. Now you might be wondering, hang on, there was a form of recall that was like that, right? Cued recall. What's the difference between recognition and cued recall where, where you had a cue? Well, let me give you an example to hopefully illustrate. Do you think you can list the names of everyone in your grade six class? I am pretty sure that I cannot, <laughs> but some of you may be able to. Um, if I was to assist you, for example, by giving you their initials and then saying, all right, can you remember their names now? This of course is an example of cued recall. Like I'm not actually giving you the names, I'm just giving you something that will hopefully help. I could even give you a stronger cue, like a picture of your grade six class and then see if you can remember names from this. But this isn't recognition, it's still cued recall. So what is recognition? Well, that would be if I gave you a list of a whole bunch of names and then you just had to identify the correct names within this group here. You can see the difference? Side note, it'd be pretty amazing if I actually managed to get a bunch of names of people from your grade six class in this random list here. So the difference is cued recall is remembering with the help of cues, hints or clues. Uh, an example is like, you know, short answer questions in an exam, whereas recognition is remembering by identifying from a provided set. So an example would be multiple choice questions. One of those four or five options is actually correct and you just need to recognize the correct one. All right, story time. When I was pretty young, I lived in South America for a few years and I learned to speak Spanish. Uh, it didn't take me long to forget almost all of it because I didn't have any reason to still speak it when I wasn't living there. But in grade 12, I randomly found this how to learn Spanish book and decided to just flip through it for fun. And I was amazed at how much I remembered. It actually didn't take me long to learn some of those words again because, well, I wasn't learning it for the first time, was I? I was relearning. And so relearning is our third type of um, retrieval of information. It's learning against something that's already been committed to memory. It's the sort of like learning something new, but also remembering at the same time. Now, relearning applies especially to procedural memory, like a sport or playing a musical instrument. You might be able to think of an example of something you did ages ago, and then maybe recently tried picking it up again. And even though you probably weren't as good at it as you were then, it doesn't actually take as long to sort of pick up that skill again. So if, for example, to like fully master that skill, it would actually take you like 80 hours or something like that. Uh, but because you've learned it before, this time around it only takes you 30 hours. Well, we can say you've saved 50 hours, right? 80 minus 30. 
and then we can divide it times it by 100 to get a percentage to actually be able to see how much time effort you've actually saved. So putting this into a formula, we can say that the saving score is the time for original learning, take away the time for relearning, uh, divided by the original and then times it by 100%. That's how much you've actually saved as a percentage uh, of, I don't know, time, energy, uh, number of times you had to try something to get better at it. And so if I put the three types of memory retrieval here in sequence, uh, recall recognition and relearning, I'm sort of splitting this one up. I know there's serial recall that I've missed out, but just for the purposes of illustration, I'm gonna put it this way. Uh, you can see that on one side is, I guess the most like difficult side, like this is remembering when you've got really very little help. Uh, we call this uh, the least sensitive type of memory. Like you're only gonna register that a memory is present if a large proportion of it remains. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, this is the most sensitive we would say because you'll be able to register that a memory is present even if only a small amount of the memory remains. All right, in conclusion, espero que hayas disfrutado esta lección y hayas aprendido más sobre cómo funcionan los cerebros y cómo recordamos. That's what Google told me to say, at least. All right, adios.